Hi, my name is Curtis Whitson, and this is a video on liquid-rich shale PVT. I'm going to introduce the technology of what we're using <coughs> in the Pipet Solution Shale Well Optimizer PVT module. This is a schematic of a liquid-rich shale PVT situation. We have a horizontal well with multiple fractures along the well. <clears throat> we're producing both gas and oil or condensate at the surface. And in general, the type of PVT data that pretty much any such well would have includes, based on the production data, the gas-oil ratio at the time of sampling and or the condensate-gas ratio, the separator gas composition, and the stock tank oil API. Now, what we really need is to come up with an estimate of what's in the reservoir initially in situ in terms of the solution gas oil ratio for an oil or the solution CGR for a gas condensate. That is really we need to know the initial in situ reservoir fluid composition. We also need a PVT model, be it black oil or equation of state based, to use together with this initial fluid to do the modeling of uh, multi-phase flow in the reservoir and production separation at the surface. Why do we really need this? The most important thing that the industry is lacking today is the ability to do forecasting, accurate forecasting, of oil and condensate yield as a function of time. So let's look at the typical behavior of gas oil ratio versus time shown here in only for the first two days of production. This is typical of the type of performance that we've seen in many, many shale wells with liquid production. And it's what we see in all of our simulation model studies. Basically, the sampled well stream will be much, much leaner, that is a higher gas oil ratio, than what you actually have in the reservoir in situ. Now these results are generated with a, um, a numerical model, finely gridded. This is the horizontal well. This is a single fracture extending out to this distance here. And the color is basically showing high pressure and low pressure. And the basically the um, GOR performance of such a well will be, after a very short transient of just a few hours, the gas oil ratio will uh, become more or less constant and remain so for days, weeks, months, and perhaps even years. And the reason for that is because it is a fundamental characteristic of producing at a, um, an elevated but constant gas oil ratio for long periods of time until the effects of outer boundaries are felt. So basically the infinite acting performance of a liquid rich shale well is a constant gas oil ratio. Now, let's take a look at this in terms of the liquid loss or the surface liquid loss in, in these wells. And what we find is that the loss is a factor of two to five. Typically 50 to 80 percent of the liquids that would be produced in a normal permeability reservoir with the same initial fluid that will only be producing um, somewhere between 20 and 50 percent of the same oil um, that would have been produced from a normal uh, permeability reservoir. So for example, if the well was in a, in a normal re reservoir producing a thousand barrels per day from a shale reservoir, you might expect to produce somewhere between 200 and 500 barrels per day. And in this particular simulation, we actually have an in, in situ fluid with 500 barrels per million uh, CGR. And when we produce the well, after only a few hours, we reach this um, flat constant uh, CGR behavior at about 200 barrels per million, representing about a 60% loss in liquids, just because of the two-phase flow in this very tight rock. So one of the problems is that traditional PVT sampling will not allow us to reconstitute the initial fluid because we don't know what the initial gas oil ratio or CGR is. And without having the initial fluids in place, we're not able to model the forecast of liquids into the future. So what to do and how to do it. 
Well, first we have to actually build a finite difference, finely gridded, well model to history match the actual PVT and test performance during sampling. This model will have to have fine gridding around the fracture to capture both the flow and phase behavior of what's going on in the reservoir in this very special type of uh, rock. And then the surface processing has to be handled as well. And the model will have to generate results that are compatible and, and, and um, matching the actual sample data that's been collected, both in terms of gas oil ratio, oil uh, density, API, and surface gas composition. Now, <clears throat> to build such a model, we need some additional information about the well, namely the length of the horizontal section, the number of fractures along the horizontal well, the reservoir formation thickness, average porosity, reservoir temperature, initial reservoir pressure, and the flowing conditions during sampling in terms of rates and flowing pressure. With that data, we should be able to generate a set of uh, calculated results that can be compared with the actual measured data. Now, one of the things that you will have to make a decision about is the fracture geometry. Because what we found is that uh, the uh, gas oil ratio variation in time can have a significant uh, difference between slab type fracture uh, networks uh, or fracture uh, geometry as shown here. This is uh, uh, production over a, about a half a year from uh, a well and it's again the single fracture shown here in white with the uh, very local uh, large drawdowns around the fracture. And what we see is the gas oil ratio for a number of different cases of permeability and fracture length uh, always end up being uh, essentially flat as long as you have not started uh, seeing the effects of uh, drainage within the uh, volume between fractures. If instead of a planar slab fracture we have a network of fractures that have been created by the um, hydraulic fracture, for example as shown here we have a fracture that's a, more like a network. And what you see is that the gas oil ratio time behavior for a single cube within that fracture network has a much different and uh, non-constant increasing GUR with time. This needs to be taken into account when one is building the model because it can have both short-term and certainly long-term effects on the GUR forecasting. So uh, what we're actually doing now is taking and building a well model in detail uh, according to the type of fracture network one assumes. Um, the unknowns in this uh, history matching exercise is to come up with a permeability estimate, a total fracture area uh, to flow uh, estimate, an initial fluid estimate in terms of composition for the EOS modeling and solution GUR for black oil modeling, and models black oil and EOS to use in the model. That's basically what's being done, and it's done in a multi-level iterative manner. At the end of the uh, history matching process, one has at the time of sampling a match of the separator gas composition, the producing gas oil ratio, and the liquid API. And if you have other available PVT data, those data would also be included in the history matching process. We can now look at the uh, multi-level uh, uh, calculation procedure that's used. We have an inner loop where we're doing the PVT modeling with uh, the phase comp equation of state PVT modeling program. This may be uh, tuning both the equation of state and adjusting the in-situ fluid composition. Um, that's being used to generate data that will be compared against the measured uh, test PVT data. Um, once that fluid model system has been determined, then it's passed out to the uh, well model or using sensor compositional and black well, well model description, with ha which has reservoir uh, properties as input as well. In particular, we're modifying the permeability and fracture area. That is then producing production rates and um, production well streams that are compared with 
the measured well production data. So we have a um, basically uh, three loops. We have iter we have regression going on within the PVT model. Pipet is doing an iteration on the uh, fluid composition and on the reservoir properties. So in summary, basically, if you provide us with your uh, liquid-rich shale production data in terms of gas oil ratio, gas rates, and flowing pressures, separator gas composition, and stock tank API gravity, together with some basic well information, the Pipet Shale Well Optimizer PVT module will then provide to you estimates of the initial fluid composition in terms of both solution GOR for an oil or uh, solution CGR for gas condensate, both black oil and EUS models, and a history matched to the PVT sampling data finite difference well model with fine gridding and the type of fracture geometry that you've selected. Now this PVT history match model will be an excellent starting point for your long-term performance history matching as production data comes in on a monthly, yearly basis into the future. And that can then be used for forecasting uh, the liquids, uh, uh, oil and, and condensate uh, yields uh, into the future from that model. Now, the subsequent uh, part two video on the liquid rich shale PVT issue will discuss in more detail the Pipet uh, Shale Well Optimizer PVT module solution. And I recommend strongly that uh, before watching that video, if you haven't already watched the three videos by Alex Hewell on the Shale Well Optimizer Pipet solution, that you do so first so that you're a bit familiar with the, the Pipet solution for the general Shale Well Optimizer history matching and well design modules because this PVT module is, is basically building upon that same Pipet project to handle this liquid-rich shale PVT problem. Thank you for your time.